Having done some decimal to binary conversions, it's time to go the other way and take a binary string and convert it to a decimal value. And it's a skill we'll be using quite often in this section. And frankly, it's one of the easiest things you're ever going to do. Because all you're doing is taking a string, and let's just say, I'll just pull one out of the old hat. All you're doing is taking that value and plugging it in, if you will, to this simple little chart. And you'll be doing it without even writing out the numbers sometimes. I mean, if you look at 11110000 often enough in your practice, something like that, you're going to say, okay, that's 240. I don't even need to do that. But especially when you're getting started, make sure to write these out. And here, all you've got to do is take the values that have a 1 under them and add them up. That's it. That's your decimal. So you've got 128 plus 64 to begin with, so that's 192. Going across, we're going to add 8 to that for 200, and then you add 2 to that. So this binary string, this is the hardest part actually, thank you, <laughs> is uh, the decimal 202. And that's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and walk through one more. And it does seem like that's the toughest part. There we go. I wasn't crazy about any of the online whiteboards I saw when I was putting this together, so we're going this way. So let's go with ones, zero, and then one, one, zero, zero, and that's it. So just go from left to right, add up the values, and you're all set. So 128 plus 64, 192. You add 32 to that, you got 224. You add eight to that, you got 232. And then four on top of that finally gives us 236. Not something you do a lot, you know, outside of networking, I admit, but this is an important conversion because we're going to be doing quite a bit of it in the next couple of segments, or sections, I should say, where we're going to be calculating the number of valid subnets that we have after someone else has done the subnetting. We're going to come up with a number of valid hosts after someone else has done the subnetting, a couple of other values, and then we'll do the actual subnetting ourselves. All important things, but to be able to do all of these things we're about to do, you got to be able to do binary to decimal, decimal to binary, and not even think about it. So when you're comfortable, and I think you are, let's go ahead and head to the next section where we'll start calculating the number of valid subnets. See you there.